tell you a parable. And it's the parable of the lunchroom, or it could be the parable of the cocktail party, or the parable of the reception at the fancy club. And you're new, and you don't know anyone. And you get to the lunchroom, or the bar, or the lounge, and you look around, and you don't know anyone, and you have to say to yourself, where shall I sit? To whom shall I speak? And how do you decide? And all of us are old enough to, it's been a few years since we were in the lunchroom, but oh my, those memories don't fade, really, do they? And what happened to you when you sat at the wrong table? When you sat down with the cool kids? I was never one of the cool kids. And so I, I actually knew my place. And so I would never have even tried it. I would have squirreled myself away someplace. But you, you look around and you try to decide, OK, who's my tribe? Who's my tribe? Who's like me? Who looks like me? Who do I think is going to act like me? Who do I think is going to talk to me? What will happen if I choose incorrectly? Which sounds pretty dreadful, doesn't it? It sounds pretty dreadful. And frankly, this party that Jesus finds himself at sounds pretty dreadful. Because people are coming in and they're watching everything you do. They're watching everything you do. And in Jesus' day and in that part of the world, honor and shame and the place at the table, all of those were very, very important. So everyone is watching Jesus, and everyone is watching everyone else come in the door, and they have to scan the crowd and say, plus five, plus six, minus two, and where do I slot myself in? And if they choose wrong, they will in fact be shamed. They will in fact be shamed. Throughout the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is an anti-role model on how to behave at parties. Read through the gospel. And I cannot advise anyone to go to parties and behave like Jesus does, because he is incredibly rude. He is so <laughs> rude. Here he is at someone else's home and taking the whole party to task for what they're doing. A fun guest to have, right? Yeah. Why are you sitting there? You should be sitting over there. I, and then he takes it a step further and calls out his host. You shouldn't be having parties like this one. You should be having parties where you invite people who won't invite you back. He basically, he's, he's, he's obnoxious. It's a good thing he's the son of God. Because <laughs> otherwise, but I don't think what he's saying is really to tell people that they should be rude at parties. He gets to do that. And he also, and I want this to be made clear, he also is not talking about heaven. It's easy to read into parables that whoever the, the lead person is in the parable, well, that must be God, and the bad guy, that must be the devil. And whatever setting they're talking about, that must be the kingdom of heaven. This is not the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is describing in this parable. And that's important, because it would be a pretty crummy heaven. It would be a really crummy heaven where we were still judging others and judging ourselves and figuring out where we sat down, as opposed to coming together as the people of God. Jesus is trying to teach the guests at the party, the Pharisees, the host of the party. He's 
trying to teach them about the games that we play with each other and those games that separate us from one another and all of the ways that we have created to make people feel as though they're not very important and that all of those games that we play and all of those ways that we make people feel bad we don't have to do that anymore we don't have to do that we don't have to put up with it and we don't have to do it to anyone else. Because, again, we'll hearken back to grade school and middle school, because I'm sure we've all gotten over it. Ha! Huh. I know that each and every one of us has a time in history where we shamed someone else in order to build ourselves up. Back in the grade school, junior high days, high school. Moments that you look back and you think, ooh, that was, that was not very nice. That was not very nice. And maybe you never did, but maybe you were on the receiving end of it. Heaven's not going to be like that. Heaven is not going to be like that. And the kingdom of God, which we are striving to bring into being here, in this space and time, doesn't need to be that way either. We can all be one. We can all be one. And you know, in the letter to the Hebrews, when he talks about, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, hearkening back to that wonderful party. This was a wonderful party. Wonderful party when Abraham and Sarah welcomed the three visitors from God. <coughs> Abraham hustles back to the tent and orders the food brought out and they spare no expense. They don't know who these people are. They bring them on in. They have this glorious meal. They get awfully good news from God in heaven. This is a much better party than the one that Jesus is stuck at. <coughs> Hospitality. Where do I see that? Hospitality, I looked up, or I read somewhere, that hospitality in Greek means <coughs> love of the strange. Love of the strange. I like that. So, when we have a party, or when we have a chance to meet <coughs> new people, we are called to have a love of the strange. Those people who we don't know or who are different than us. And so, I think Jesus is calling us to meet someone new. To meet someone new. And not just so that we can become more popular and have one more acquaintance on our, on our uh, <coughs> dance card, but to meet someone new because maybe we'll be surprised. And as we have this love for the strange, and we practice hospitality, and we treat each other as equals, we might find out that people aren't always the way we expect them to be. They may not be anything like we expected them to be based on their age, or the way they dress, or their socioeconomic status, or their gender, or their race. They might be completely different than we expect them to be, because we don't know everything. And if you're very lucky, some of them will be angels, messengers from God. And we just don't know when those messengers from God are going to speak to us, when those angels will appear. We're at a party here right this minute. We are at a party. We are going to eat at God's table. No one is going to tell you where you are to sit. And woe to the church that tells you where you are to sit. Just saying. <laughs> we come together as the family of God. And we are equals in the sight of God. And 
and we come together to eat a meal that is hosted by God. And while you likely all know each other reasonably well, maybe there's something about one another that you don't know yet. Have that love of the strange to find out more about those who surround you and to be ready to welcome all who might come through your doors, recognizing them as members of God's family and maybe angels today. We just have no way of knowing. We don't have to play any games. We don't have to worry about being the nerd. We don't have to worry about maintaining our popularity status. We are children of God. And so we are always welcome and always welcome to the party. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.